It's another Mate here with teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic. This time we're talking about the parts of the ellipse and identifying the parts of an ellipse given an equation. So let's start with x minus 2 squared over 16 plus y minus 5 squared over 4 equal to 1. So if you try to look at this, the bigger denominator is on um, x minus 2 squared. So automatically we would know our orientation of our ellipse. This is horizontal. Horizontal because our bigger denominator is on x. So we will be following the format as we have x minus 2 squared over a squared. Our a there is going to be under x minus 2. I mean x minus h. Sorry on that. And then plus, we have y minus k squared over b squared. And that's equal to 1. So looking at the format for horizontal orientation of an ellipse, all we have to do is to identify first our center. The center here is on this one here, we've got a 2. So since we have negative 2, so that should be positive 2 on x. And then on y, we have negative 5 here, so that should be 5 here. And then we've got already the center, so all we have to do is to look for A. Our A here is, since we've got here A squared, which is 16, getting the square root of 16, that is 4. So our A is 4. Our B there is on Y minus 5. So B squared is 4, so that should be equal to, our B is now 2. Getting the square root of 4, that is 2. Next, so we are going to look for C. C here is just simply following our formula. We've got C equal to the square root of A squared minus B squared. So our A here is 4, so 4 squared minus our B, which is 2. So we've got 2 squared here. Simplifying, this is square root of 4 squared, that's 16, minus 2 squared, that's 4. So we've got square root of 12. Our C there is equal to, um, that's going to be 3.46. So that is our C. So since we already have A, B, C, so it's now really uh, good for us to identify the different parts of our ellipse. But still, but first let's try to plot our center here. Center is at 2, 5, so 2 on x-axis and 5 on the y-axis, so this is our center. Next one, since we have the center already, all we have to do is to locate our foci, our vertices, and covertices. So let's start with our vertices. So for the vertices, all we have to do is to consider that under vertices there, we are to use our measurement on A. A there is 4. Take note, our A is from the center to our vertices. So since 4 is on A, so we will be counting from the center to, since this is horizontal orientation, we'll be counting horizontally 4 units. So from the center, so we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is our vertices. The other one is 4 to the right, so we have 1, 2, 3, and then 4. So those are our vertices. Next one, we are going to identify our uh, coordinate for the vertices. So we start with the first one is at negative 2, and then we have 5 on our y. The other one is on 6, and then 5 on y. So those are our vertices. Next, we are going to identify our foci. Our foci is located inward of our vertices towards the center. And then our foci there will be measured from the center uh, 3.46 units. So from the center here, we'll be counting three units and then just estimate on 0.46. So we have one, two, three, and then 0.46 is somewhere here. So this is our foci 1, or focus 1, sorry. 
And then from the center, we count towards the vertex, three units, and then we've got 0.46 to estimate on that one. So we have one, two, three, and then this one is 0.46. This one is our F or focus two. So next one, we are going to identify our coordinates. So we've got that one as negative two. And then we have five. And then the other one is, that's not actually negative two. That is, We've got that one under negative 1, and then we still have 0.46 for that one, so that should be negative 1.46. And then on the other side, we've got that one as 5, and then we've got 0.46 for that one, so 5, 0.46. And then we've got 5 as well. So those are our coordinates of the foci. Next, we are going to identify the covertices. So take note, covertices, we are referring to the B here. So we'll be counting from the center two units up and down. So we've got one, two. This is now our covertices. One, and then we count down. One, two. This is now another covertices. So we are going to draw our ellipse now. So drawing that one. Sorry on the drawing. I'm not good in drawing. So let's just assume that this one is a perfect ellipse. So this is how your ellipse would look like. So, but before that one, I forgot to identify the coordinate and the covertices. So we have the covertices here that is under two. And then we've got three on the first one on Y. And the other one is on two. And then we've got seven for that one. So that is how we identify the parts of the, an ellipse using graphical method. Let us now go for this um, example, this equation. Now, if you notice that this equation is different from the first one, because if you try to look at that one, you've got there a non-fraction. And if you try to recall, once you say standard equation of an ellipse, it should be with a fraction. And also on the right side, it should be one. But if you try to look at this, this is 36. So all we have to do is to do something on it like make this one equivalent to one by simply dividing this one by itself. And since we're dividing here, we also have to divide the other side because if we do not do so, this will make it a different equation. So in order to do that one, we also have to divide this one by 36. And so with this one by 36. So dividing, simplifying this one, we've got nine and 36 here. They have common factor, which is nine. So all we have to do is to divide nine by nine and 36 by nine. So this will be now 9 divided by 9, that's equal to 1. So we have only x plus 1 squared. And then 36, if we divide that 1 by 9, that will be equal to uh, 4. And then we've got plus. We have 4y minus 1 squared over 36. If you try to look at that one, we've got common factor as well, which is 4. So we divide 4 by 4 and 36 by 4. So 4 divided by 4, that's equal to 1. So we have y minus 1 squared here over 36 divided by 4, that's 9. And then that will be equal to 36 over 36, which is equal to 1. So this is now our standard equation of our ellipse. Now, identifying first the orientation. If you try to look at that one, our orientation of our ellipse here is going to be vertical. Why vertical? Because if you try to look at the, the denominators, we've got 4 and 9. 9 is the bigger denominator, and it is under our y minus 1 squared. So that should be vertical. Next one, we are going to identify our center. Our center is at negative 1 because we have a plus 1 here, so that should be negative 1. And then we have a negative 1 here on y, and that should be positive 1. Next, we are to identify a. A here is now under y minus 1 squared. So this 9 here is our b squared because if you try to uh, recall, once you've got vertical orientation, we've got that one as x minus h squared over b squared plus y minus k squared over a squared. That's for 
vertical orientation, and that will be equal to 1. Now, going over to A, our A there is going to be under y minus 1 squared. So we've got 9 as our A squared, getting the square root of that 1 that is 3. Next, we've got B, so B should be located here under x plus 1 squared. So we've got B squared, which is 4, getting the square root of that 1, that is 2. So let's now locate C, or identify C. So C here is going to be coming from square root of A squared minus B squared. C is going to be equal to square root of our A squared here is 9. We can simply base that one here. Our A squared is 9 minus our B squared, which is 4. Or we can uh, go back here. That, that is the same as well. We can have it as 3 squared, that's 9. 2 squared, that's 4. So next one, we are going to simplify this one. So this should be square root of 9 minus 4, which is square root of 5. Simplifying our square root of 5, square root of 5 is equal to 2.24. So this is now 2.24. So C is 2.24. So next one, we are going to identify the different parts because we have all those information that we need in identifying the different parts. We start with the vertices. Vertices is going to be... Um, based on the number of units on A. So since we've got here A is 3, and if we are going to use graphical method, we start from the center. So let's try to locate center here in the graph. So we have negative 1, 1. Negative 1 on X is here, and then 1 here on Y. So this will be our center. So since we have now the center, we are going to locate the different parts, starting off with the vertices. So we count three units because our A here is three. So from the center, we count up and down three units because this is vertical orientation. So we have one, two, and then three. So this is where our vertices is, one of the vertices is. And then we count three units down. So we have one, two, three. So this is another vertex. So let's have or name our, or our coordinate for the vertices. So let's start with negative 1 down, negative 1, and then negative 2. The other one is with negative 1, 4. So next one, we go for the foci. Foci is always going to be located at the major axis, which is this time our y-axis. So we've got on C, we've got 2.24. So 2.24 from the center, so we have 1, 2, and then for the 0.24, we are just going to estimate that 1. So this is where our foci is. I mean, one of the foci. So next, we are going to count down as well from the center, 2 units, and 0.24. So we have 1, 2, and then we've got 0.24 somewhere here. So this is our other foci. Next, we are going to identify the coordinate. So we have here negative 1. And then on the bottom part, we have that 1 as under negative 1, po 0.24. And then on the other one, we have that 1 as negative 1. And this one is 3 here. So adding 0.24 for that one, that should be 3.24. So next one, we are going to identify the co-vertices. So on B, we have two. So we are going to count from the center from horizontally two units to the right and left. So we have from here, from the center, we count one, two. So this is where our co-vertices is. And then one, two to the left, this is where our co-vertices is. So identifying the coordinate, we've got that one as negative 3 and then 1. The other one is 1 and then 1. So drawing our ellipse now, connecting the vertices and the co-vertices. So this is now our ellipse. Sorry for the drawing. So that is how we identify our different parts of the ellipse and also graphing our ellipse. So I hope you've learned something from me. So this is once again your teacher. I'll see you on the next video.